Hey everyone, Diogo Marquez here, your friend in sales. In today's video, I want to share with you the exact same script I use when I cold call people out of the blue. I want to share this with you because this is practical. This doesn't come out of the book. This comes from experience of doing this every single day. And some key pointers that I want to share with you before I share the script, just for you to understand why exactly I do this thing in this specific manner, is that when you are in the beginning, it's understandable and normal that you feel a little bit uh, anxious and frustrated because it's not working, because you're in the beginning. But what you need to do is understand that this is a kind of a, a feedback loop process, meaning you are not that off, but you are not on point yet. So what you need to do is try to figure out some cues of what people are telling you because you'll start noticing some patterns. And this is the key point for you to improve your script because you'll start seeing the same things over and over and over again, as long as you obviously keep cold calling people. You start noticing the same type of responses. So when you see those and then you say, okay, I, I got one of those, I got one of those, maybe because I, I said that, so you develop a second script, right? Just keep adjustments and then say that, right? Do that for a while, let's say like for a week, for instance, something just for a couple of days or even if it's the same day to the same type of people, see what I mean? And then you start seeing common patterns and you start noticing some things. And a key point to this is if you're doing things in a certain way and getting certain results, maybe if you do things in a different way, you get different results, right? So this is what I do every day. And before we get to the script, there are also another key point that I want to share with you. So the first one is be open-minded to keep adjusting. The second one, this is really important, keep it super short. This is the second one. The third one is you need to know before you call someone exactly what's your goal. And in my specific case, I want to get a meeting, a Zoom call, or preferentially, preferentially like a, a call, like actually in front of the person because I'm more effective that way. So when you go about and doing your calls, it's like if you can sell over the phone the first day, obviously fine, that's great. But in most cases, what will end up happening is that your you kind of like your least objective is a minimum viable objective is for you to get a meeting. That way, when you are like feedbacking the conversation and when they say something to you and then you reply back, just keep in mind your main objection or your main objective, which is to get a meeting with that person, like a face-to-face -face meeting. doesn't matter if it's Zoom. I prefer like face-to-face because -face I'm more, more effective that way. But if you can get Zoom because we are in the COVID thing, well, fine. The main point is, if you are not sure exactly what's your outcome of the call, you're gonna start feeling anxious. Because this is something that is like counterintuitive. It's not normal for people to call, call other people and get meetings that way. So if you are doing that, you must be like a guided focus, laser guided focus, like a sniper type of thing. You'll notice that if you keep it super simple, your brain will help you. It's only when you start overwhelming yourself with lots of possible narratives and lots of possible outcomes and lots of possible variables, you start feeling overwhelmed because your brain doesn't have enough data points yet in order to deal with that. It's like you are doing something kind of new, right? You're not that experienced yet and that's fine. But the main difference that I want for you to understand is that this is liberating because you are meeting someone new and with the possibility of giving you the money that you need in order to become financially independent. So you need to do this. But to do this, you need, you need kind of a, a, little, a little practice and training. It's like coming out of the blue and then becoming the world's top world's boxer. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You need to practice. And in order to practice, there are some like practical things you need to realize before you go about and doing some cold calling. So, the other video that I have in this playlist is regarding tonality. This helps a lot when you are calling people because people will feel that you're like calmer, you're like calling them in a way that, and your voice is like works better. They feel that because it's all about tonality. This is the first thing. The second way, a thing, like I told you, is that you need to keep it super short. You need to know the objective firsthand, but then you need to keep it super short. Super short. And then it's about 
like I, like I told you before, it's about a feedback loop process, meaning you s keep uh, stay with your script, but you start noticing some common patterns, and then you like reevaluate and readjust in order like to keep improving the script. It, it won't take that much like uh, like uh, adjustments until you start getting something that works. So this is the script that I use. Let's let's get to this. When I call someone, like I told you, I'm calling people on LinkedIn. They have their cell phone numbers listed there. And I filter the list, meaning the people that have like, from my understanding, at least show like have the best, probably they have like potential to be the customers that I'm looking for. In my specific case, I'm looking for people that will be able to pay at least five to, to 6,000 a year in premiums, like upfront. That's absolutely the minimum. If I can get that, I'll be successful. But let's say I get someone that pays 1,000, fine. I won't say no, but it's like, at a minimum, like on a best day hypothesis, I'll get someone that will be paying five to 6,000. If I get one that pays 50 or 150,000, even better. But it, just as long as you have this idea in mind is that this is a person that potentially can pay me 6,000. I'll keep this super short. And I just want to present myself in a way that we can have a possible meeting, let's say in a couple of future dates. That's the like pretty sniper-like, right? So this is my script. John, this is Diogo. We have this contact from LinkedIn. I'm a life insurance agent with MetLife. I'd like to be useful. I'd like to help. That's it. And what you will notice is that when you say this, and you say this in a calm manner, there's a silence. Usually there's a silence. And then there are three types of people that you will get a response. So you pretty much like place these in these one of these three categories. One is someone that is kind of more social. He will reply in a way that is kind of friendly and say, well, <laughs> I actually need insurance. Uh, actually." Good thing you call because I'm actually looking for something, something along those lines or something like something in between, between the I'm busy and the social, something like, how can you help? Something like this. So these are your best cases and we will get to the second stage of your script. But these are the, the first, these are the ones that you're looking for essentially. The second one is like the middle one, the ones that won't do anything. It's like the yellow people. So the first one, the first group is the red, uh, the green people. The second one is the yellow people. And yellow people is something like, uh, I'm in a meeting, I'm about to get into a meeting. I'm, can you call me later? Can you call me tomorrow? I'm busy this week. Can we, can we talk next week? Something like that. They are getting space in between you. <coughs> These are the yellow people. And then you have the douchebags. And the douchebags, like I already addressed in the previous video, you need to be ready to answer back very rudely as well. Because you need to pe put people in their places as soon as you start getting like a kind of a spicy uh, response from them. Because you need to have your um, sanity, like you, you need to to stay sane while you are doing this process because you'll deal with lots of bullies, lots of people that are not like, they are very ill-mannered. We already talked about this in previous videos. I just want for you to address that most people, they will be nice. And like the other part of people, it's like in between. They, they won't be rude, but it's like space. It's like you can't jeopardize your future compromise your future because you don't you want you don't want to have the feeling of calling people where the minority of them are going to be douchebags so just think about the best future outcome for yourself if you are going through this process right just knowing that out of 50 calls that you make in one day you're going to get one or two that are douchebags right so just like answer them back in something like unpolite to them like the way that I addressed before in the previous video and get it over with, like kill the call as soon as possible, okay? So this is my script though, I will say it one, once, once again. John, this is Diogo. We have this contact from LinkedIn. I'm a life insurance agent with MetLife. I'd like to be useful, I'd like to help. Then you'll notice the silence and 
if you get someone that is really social, they'll start talking first and pretty much they will take over the conversation because they're social. They understand this is a social situation. They want to have everything at like at peace in between you and them. So they'll take over the conversation. And this is the best scenario for you because you want to be the person that speaks the least. You want to have them start talking. Remember that the one that talks most loses control. So if you speak less, you have them talk. So just keep in mind that you need to, you need to kill every single thing that you say with a question. You know what I mean by kill is like finish what you say with a question and not a, uh, and not a close-ended question. Close-ended question is essentially something like they say yes or no. You want to ask them something that they actually need to say something like, uh, how would you do this? Like, this is a, a good example. It's like, they can't say yes or no. They have to say something else, right? So you need to understand that you are talking with another human being, right? They're not superior. They're not inferior. They're at the same level. And you, you're actually doing them a favor because you are sharing with them something that is useful. You're giving them life insurance, right? If something happens to them, they get paid or their family gets paid or their company gets paid and the liabilities get killed. So it's a good thing because the insurance company would be financing the thing. So it make taking that uh, pressures off them because liquidity comes in. You're providing a service, right? So just a matter of you dealing with what you have to do every single day in order for you to keep moving towards the end goals that you want. I have my specific goals written down. I write them down every single day because I tend to get insane sometimes. So to keep my sanity at check, I, 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 I just need to write things down. Exact. Why am I doing what I'm doing today? Right? So it's just a matter of you exactly seeing what's real and what's not. And what I find is that when you're doing cold calling, if you start getting aggravated and start feeling stressed, just calm yourself down. And what I mean by calming yourself down is just start writing. At least that for me that worked really well. Start writing exactly what you want to, to attain in the near future. Something like you want your PhD or you want to buy an apartment building or you want like lots of money, let's say a specific amount, let's say 2.1 million in life insurance premiums that would equate to 300 people with 70K each. That's my objective for this year. I'm, I'm being super specific and I know the types of products and I know how to like figure out the weighting in between the, the portfolio of what I'm providing them in that way that it will get to that price. If I get one guy that pays me 1500 fine, I won't say no. But it's like you can get references out of that person that probably have like 100 and something extra. So like in between both, I got what I wanted. See what I mean? So it's just a matter of you understanding exactly what's in front of you that is keeping you from achieving your goals and you have to find a way of solving that get around it or a, a way of solving the problem and for me what works is and sometimes I, I get insane sometimes I, I lose my sanity sometimes I, I, I just it says I need to calm myself down get myself in a peaceful state and then see exactly what the problem is in front of me and my specific case is I'm placing way too much weight on a couple of douchebags because if I actually look at it from a statistical point of view, when I, cause I have my, I use my Excel spreadsheet and I put notes like after this, each one that I call it, say John is like, he was a douche. Like Mary was like a nice lady. So, so I understand exactly what happened. And if I take a waiting, most people, I would guess like the, like 90% of them, like they're nice people. If you say something like this, because look at it from, from your perspective, if someone was calling you and just telling you this, hi, John, I'm Diogo. We have this contact from LinkedIn. I'm a life insurance agent with MetLife. I'd like to be useful. I'd like to help. You're not selling anything. You're not pushing anything. You're not anxious. You're just saying, listen, I'm just like you. I'd like to help. If they reckon, if they start answering back in a way that is unpolite, it's because they're insecure, right? because they don't have the, the guts to do that. But on the other hand, if they're like, how can you help, right? One of my best clients, he asked me that. Actually, I didn't call him, I sent him an email because I didn't have his phone number, but that's what he answered. It's like, thank you for your contact. How can you help? 
right? This is a pretty much like straight up a response. It's like, how can you help, right? What is it that you do, right? We ended up having a pretty much a good relationship because I manage their insurance portfolio. He sends me clients. I help them with insurance related, uh, related things. So it works. So there are a lot of people like that. And you need to understand that in my specific case, let's take this for an example. Let's say whatever you're trying to achieve, but I'll give you my example. So maybe you apply it to your situation. I'm looking to attain 2.1 million in life insurance premiums this year. And I, w I had this equated in a way that is 70K per person times 300 contracts. I do in between 50 to 60 calls a day and it's a struggle, it's a bitch. Sometimes I can't do it, sometimes I can. It's like, that, that's, that's where my struggle is. Just want to share with you that I did m way more when I was doing door-to-door -door selling. I did like 500 doors a day with no problem because you get into a building that is like, has like 10 stories high and that has like 10 up 10 units per per story. So it's like per floor. So it's like you can do it. You just start on the top, end up in the bottom and pretty much like you took care of everything. And here taking the, th uh, the, the phone, the phone, using the phone, it's a little harder because it's, uh, it's about people, how they are answering back. So you need to call them in a way that it's like more therapeutical. And I've learned this through, through hard knocks. It's like when you hear, hear about those people and you see some YouTube videos and all that, and I see like pretty much like a bunch of, a majority of them. It's like they like sound like the nasty car salesperson, right? Nothing wrong with selling cars, nothing like that. I just want to share with you the kind of that notion that you have like the, the sleazy salesperson or nervous or anxious, but it doesn't work. And I can tell you by experience, I'm the aggressive one. I went to ghetto neighborhoods. I went to like the super high net worth individual neighborhoods and just start knocking on doors, going to doorsteps and like, going there and just presenting myself and trying to do business. I, I've done all that. And I can tell you that it doesn't work that well when you're doing like cold calling. What I've noticed is that by, by dealing with lots of social people, and what I mean by social people, is just a name that I come up for. It's like people that are more, their social IQ is higher. You know what I mean? Like those people that you, you like to be hanging around them. It's like for some reason, just like you like them. You know those people, everyone knows people like that. So you need to try to become more like that. And I can tell you that in between both my general personality and I'm more aggressive in nature, I'm like, I'll punch first and ask questions later. This, this is how I usually, that's, that's how I deal with things. That's my nature, underlying nature. That doesn't work well. So I, I started to like mimic when like a therapist, I, I, I know a couple, they're different. And I noticed that their responses, like people's responses to them are much, much better than when they were responding to people like me. And I'm the aggressive one. I'm like, let's go. Like people doesn't work well, especially on the phone. It works if you are in a ghetto, if, if like, because they, they, they like that. It's like, let's have some fun, right? But when you're calling people, it's different. You need to be more th therapeutical. In order for you to do that, and this is where I struggle sometimes doing, because I, I'm lacking at this point, because I should be doing more calls and I'm struggling with this. And I'm just sharing this with you, because I think sometimes you see a lot of people rambling and showing themselves something that they are not. I actually rather you seeing me exactly for what I am with all my shortcomings and all that, but I do have some strong points. And my strong points are that I, I've done this before several times and I'm struggling to doing more phone calls a day because I find myself, something is pretty peculiar. It's like I absorb people's energy and I get drained. It's something, I, I don't know what it is, but I, if I find an answer, I will share with you, at least at this point where I am in my life, my professional life, I'm struggling a bit with this because this is what happens. I need to recharge. And I find that some people, especially socially more like intelligent people, they deal with this better. They struggle with the same thing, but they deal with this better. This is something that I, I keep practicing every day. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger, he had like, 
he had strong points and weak points in his in his uh, body. So he needed to work more on those. Doesn't mean he wasn't a great athlete. Nothing like that. He was he was a great athlete, like Michael Tyson or all athletes. They have the, their shortcomings. You don't see them well because they practice so hard. In my specific case, I'd rather talk about my weaknesses because I know my strengths well. I'm aggressive. That that helps me a lot because I, I can go like a long time, like calling people and doing all that. But I just struggle because I tend to absorb people's energy and that gets me drained. So I try to find ways around this and the way for me to do that is to keep motivating myself. Like, why is it that I'm doing this? And I find that if this is you, if this is something that you are struggling with as well, do this. It's like, if that's the problem, it's like, because listen, like doing 50 calls, is that a problem? Essentially pick up a phone, like click and there's, the phone starts ringing, right? So there's no problem, like physical problem there. It's not like running three hours or four hours, something like that. So this is a psychological problem. And this is happening because you are placing way too much pressure on the call that you are about to make. So if you take godness out of people and just see them, they are a human being, right? With struggling with things and having their strong points and weak points as well. You just narrow down something to something like really logical, just making a phone call, right? And when you call, you understand that maybe they are like you, maybe they're not, maybe they are like you. And when you're calling them, just try to be useful, but not to be like in a pleading way, like, like begging. You're not begging anything. It's just try to be useful. Like, I want to help. Maybe you're an architect, right? And the guy is like... A, a syndicator is like a real estate syndicator. So he needs an architect because they're building some buildings somewhere, right? So just trying to be useful, right? Just, are you an accountant? Something like, yeah, I'm an accountant. Just like now the COVID thing, I just rambling. So the COVID thing, we're looking for more customers. This is what we do, right? Something like that, right? In my specific case, I'm a financial planner. I focus on life insurance products. So I just like to be useful, I like to help. That's it. If they answer, like from a shortcoming perspective, they are the ones that are liable. So kill the call. Why would you be wasting time with people like that, right? So, but you have an error in your statistics. It's like you have your, you have your data points, but then you have like this variance because there are people that will answer differently from what you are expecting. It can go both ways. You can look at someone's picture and it might sound like a rude person, then it's like really nice. And then you can get the opposite, someone that looks really nice and it will be a douche. You just don't know that, right? You keep getting better and better and, and more tuned in your process. But consistency is key here. And I found that this is my shortcoming. And I just wanted to share this with you guys because this is my road to achieving what I want. And I want to share the things that I've learned so far with you because I've done this for a while, especially uh, door knocking. This is my uh, actually know how to do that well and I was doing very well and very consistently until I actually needed to change my perspective in doing this by a telemarketing perspective. I needed to adjust and I'm just sharing with you that forget about those overly complicated scripts that you see online and all that about crazy manipulations and all that. They all come natural to you. You'll start dealing with this but in a different way. And I'm sharing this with you because I've tried both. I've tried being super aggressive and it doesn't work. And I've tried like all sorts of in-between stuff and it doesn't work at well, that well. So what does work for me, and this is what I want for you to, to get from this video, is that try to be therapeutical. Try to be calm in a way that, let's say you are a therapist, right? Let's say you are someone that is just, just trying to be useful. It's all about you, not me. This is what I do, right? So they will respect you because you are just saying, you are kind of getting a little barrier there saying, this is like no cross barrier. I'm an economist or I'm a physicist or I'm like a computer science major, right? Instant authority. You know what, okay, he's like a PhD in, in computer science, right? Just calling because I'd like to be useful. We're going through a crisis now. I can help you with my skills, right? What is it that you need? Can I be useful? If you can't be useful because in a way that they figured that it's not a good fit, 
fine. But there's absolutely no reason for them to be unpolite with you. If that's the case, they are not a good fit. So just kill the call. See? And then move on to the next one. I can tell you that most people that entered MDRT, which is Million Dollar Roundtable, this association with top life insurance producers all around the world, all of them bar none pretty much say the same thing. You need consistency of calls and doing those like religiously on a single, every single, every single day. And if you are struggling doing that, there's a problem. You need to get around that problem and then you'll be successful. And what I found that the difficulty that I've been going through is that I get drained from doing the calls. So by doing this video, maybe you can understand where I'm coming from because most people, if you place them in the same situation, they are going to feel pretty much like the majority of the same things. But the difference between most people and successful people is that successful people find a way to solve the problem and then they become successful. This is what I wanted to, uh, to, to share with you. So remember the script, remember to be therapeutical, remember to be laser guided focused and remember to have it really short. You're just having a conversation with someone and you need to know your main objective and essentially there are two objectives. Your overall objective, I'm going to make 2.1 million this year, 70K a contract times 300 people. And when you're calling someone, your main objective is to get a meeting, right? Nothing other than that. So when the conversation starts going to Pluto, just get them back to earth and just saying, I am available Thursday within nine o'clock or two o'clock in the afternoon will work better for you. See what I mean? And try to be therapeutical. And another thing, I have a mirror here. I use this a lot. You can get, it's a small mirror and what I notice is that when I'm calling people, sometimes I forget about myself. And that's an important thing because you need to kind of detach yourself from the conversation. So what I do is I have this small mirror where I can see myself when I'm calling people. And that way I can see if I'm getting nervous or I'm getting like a little anxious or talking too fast. That way I can look at myself. So get a mirror like this, it cost me like 10 bucks or 20 bucks or something like that just for you to see yourself. So you are calling someone and seeing yourself when you're calling them. That way you get more in control. And remember, the one that talks more loses. So you need to end every single line of conversation with an open-ended question. Something like, would like two or four o'clock, right? How would you do this, right? How many employees that you have, right? How would you see this working in your company? Open-ended questions. Force yourself in the beginning because most people in the beginning, they'll try to close the conversation. They are analyzing but they, because they are not expecting someone that is well-mannered, they're well-spoken, like very articulate, very calm, very therapeutical. They are not expecting that, right? This is a sign of confidence. This is a clear sign of confidence. So when you do that, People in, sometimes, if they are analytical in nature, they have that analysis like probe for them like a shield. Like a shield. They're trying to figure out ways of, but then they're in, they have another conflict because they're seeing, well, this is a very polite person. This is a calm person. It's very like um, well-mannered, very respectful. They can see that. And when they start talking, maybe they ask you some questions regarding uh, how would you help? and you talk about, let's say, flex benefits, how would you implement that in an in, in employee's compensation package, something like that, right? So when you start developing your conversation, they see, okay, this guy actually knows what he's talking about, right? But they're not going to say that, but they, they sense it. And they keep that sense of the one that is not a pushy salesperson. This is why I'm sharing with you that the pushy salesperson here, it doesn't work. Because you are looking for people that have money where worth all, and they are paying like, five to six K, like the best case that I want is in between 50 and 100 K. So they are making a decision on you and they like the thing that you talk, do you call them. They like the way that you are talking to them because you're not anxious. They're liking the way that you are presenting your product because the more questions they, they ask, like in a short way, you tell them that the, the flex benefits, fringe benefits, the fine contribution plans, whatever the thing that you're, you're selling, right? 
So you know your product and you do that because you practice, right? So when you call people, you already practice two things, sales and your product. So people start seeing you as an authority. And when you mention like, let's say MetLife or something like a big company, they're like, okay, this guy was a big company, right? He's just calling me because he's an entrepreneur. That's what they are thinking about. So they like that, right? So just forget about the rude people. You're going to get them. I get them. So I try to like kill the conversation like as quick as you can because and move on to the next one. Remember, this is all about not this point in time, but this point in time, because tomorrow, if you did enough phone calls today, you're going to get a meeting. And if you keep doing that on a consistent basis, you're going to get more meetings. And from the, the majority of people that enter the MDRT and stay there for like their lifetime members now, all of them, it's, they get four meetings a day. That means that they have to make a bunch of phone calls every single day in order to get those types of meetings to the next day in order to get an agenda, let's say at five, five days a week. It's because they could do it like Saturdays and Sundays, but the majority of them, they tell it's like 20 meetings a, a, a week. That means like four meetings a day, like from Monday to Friday. So you can have more networking events, let's say you go golfing or you join some networking group or anything like that, that improve your overall chances because you're building your tribe. But if you're doing cold calling, and I highly recommend you for you to do that because there are more people that you can get in that way, just a more practical and direct approach. You're trying to get meetings. So your objective for today is to get four meetings. Doesn't matter if they are like all like uh, scattered all over the place between the, the week, as long as you get four, because tomorrow you want to get m another four, right? And actually got a, a one appointment that was from today, right? So fo focus on getting these numbers because people that got into the MDRT, they tell on a consistent basis that people that do get 20 meetings a week, they get to the 2.1 million mark. So if you do this, you, you will improve your chance of being successful because you are doing things in a way that the benchmark, meaning them, years and years and years of track record and people that have been successful before you, they are already telling you that you focus on business owners focus on getting four appointments every single day, that means you need to do those calls. Now, if you get your tribe, you're not doing uppers like car sales people usually refer to this. You're not doing cold calls. You like already like you have people in your network and you can get from referrals. That's fine. I'm not at that point in the specific uh, point in my uh, professional career. I would like to because I would need to, I wouldn't need to go through all this pain sometimes that I go through by calling people. I'm not there yet, and you just can't um, be like uh, daily um, daydreaming. Because if you're not there yet, you need to get there. In order to get there, you need to take some steps and go through some shit essentially until you get there. So just place less uh, weight on douchebags and just focus on finding good people, finding like other therapeutic people that when you disconnect the phone, you actually feel better. Focus on those ones because I promise you that if you have like a nasty guy and then do another call, just don't end your day with a nasty guy. I promise you that you need to f f uh, finish your day with a good guy or a girl. If you do that, you'll feel better. So I hope this video was useful to you. I know I'm rambling a bit, but I'm, I'm a rambler. It's just about sharing my journey and helping you as well if you relate with some of the content that I'm sharing with you, because this is real. This is something that I do every day. This is my desk. This is my mirror. I have my, my phone there. This is what I do, and I, I do these videos because I know this is really hard, and you should... Uh, Take it with a grain of salt when you see people out there telling you that you just need to do this manipulation and this works. And I do that on a consistent basis. And I found that if you try to come across as someone that actually knows what he's talking about, but people see you as an authority and see you as a therapeutic person, seeing you, I like to be about that guy. I like to be hanging around that guy. It's like, gets me calmer. People need to get out of stress stay calm and find someone like them that can help them go through their situation. If this is you, you just made a phone call today, right? They weren't expecting you, so they are testing you out, but then they're seeing, I like this person, right? So this is what I wanted to share with you guys. Remember to subscribe, click that bell button so you can get notified every time that I make new videos like this. And 
And for some reason, if you have any questions, just drop them down in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to jump in and help you guys out. Peace.